Welcome back students. Myself Dr. Jibran Ahmed presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with another important topic that is the high yield topic and today we are going to uh, do the second important high yield topic. So today's topic of discussion is MEN syndrome that is multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome. It is a group of autosomal dominant syndrome with a very high penetrance resulting in proliferative lesions that includes hyperplasias, adenomas and carcinomas of multiple organs and tissues in our body. Always remember hyperplasias always come before carcinoma or hyperplasia always precede carcinoma especially in case of tumors arising from the thyroid C-cells that is for example medullary carcinoma. Now the tumors which are arising in the men's syndrome they share certain important features which are different from their sporadic counterparts. So what are the important features of the tumors which are seen in individuals with men's syndrome? These tumors if you are going to see they occur at a younger age group okay and these tumors they they occur in multiple endocrine organs okay either at the same time that is either they will occur synchronously or at different times that is they will occur metachronously so these tumors are involving multiple endocrine organs okay now the third important point is even within the same organ the tumor can be multifocal the tumors are often preceded by an asymptomatic stage of hyperplasia involving the cell of origin as we have discussed. So hyperplasia always precedes your carcinoma. Example patients with uh, example as we see the patients with MEN2 syndrome as we see over here the patients with MEN2 syndrome they show C-cell hyperplasia adjacent to medullary thyroid carcinoma. So if you remember uh, our thyroid has two types of cells. One is the thyroid follicular epithelial cell which is giving rise to all the different types of thyroid carcinoma and we have the C cell which gives rise to the medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. So often along with the medullary thyroid carcinoma you also have certain focal areas which show C cell hyperplasia. So hyperplasia always precedes the carcinoma and these tumors they are more aggressive and they have a very high chance of recurrence. So these are all the important basic points with regard to tumors arising in individuals with men's syndrome. Now this men's syndrome it can be classified into two main types. So the number one type over here is the men one syndrome also called as Wormer syndrome. Now and then the second type is your men two syndrome. Now the men two syndrome can further be subclassified into three types. One is your men two a syndrome called as the Sippel syndrome. MEN 2B syndrome and lastly we are having the MEN 4 syndrome okay so let us begin today's topic of discussion that is your multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 that is the MEN 1 syndrome it is also called as Wormer syndrome as we have discussed and this MEN 1 syndrome it occurs because of mutation which occurs in the germline that is they are inherited in MEN1 tumor suppressor gene. So the mutations over here are present in the MEN1 tumor suppressor gene which is present in chromosome number 11 and which encodes a protein called as MENIN. So basically very very important MCQ that MEN1 syndrome occurs because of germline mutation in MEN1 tumor suppressor gene in chromosome 11 which is encoding a protein that is called as MENIN. Okay, so one very important thing is that what is the basic function of menin? What does this menin do? This menin protein, it forms a complex with certain transcription factors including June D and KMT T2A or MLL. So when this menin, it forms a complex with the transcription factor June D, it results in, the, in what is called as MEN1 syndrome. Similarly, this menin, when it is forming a complex with KMT2, a or MLL gene it is implicated in the pathogenesis of acute leukemia okay so this is very important now overall if you see the multiple endocrine neoplasia if you see it is a rare disorder it is not very common it is a rare disorder now most important MCQ that is asked that which are the organs which are involved in the MEN1 syndrome so there is a concept of three P's the parathyroid pancreas as well as the pituitary gland is involved 
so the parathyroid okay when involved they show primary hyper parathyroidism it is the most common manifestation of the men one and it is also the initial manifestation of men one syndrome and it is seen classically in 80 to 95 percent of the patients by 40 to 50 years of age okay now parathyroid abnormalities it includes parathyroid hyperplasia as well as parathyroid adenomas the second important organ which is involved in men 1 is the pancreas. Now the pancreas basically is involved by many different kinds of endocrine tumors of the pancreas. And this is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in men 1 patients. And these are highly, highly aggressive tumors. So again the pancreas will show different kinds of hyperplasias, adenomas along with that carcinomas as well. Now, men 1 associated pan uh, pancreatic endocrine tumors, they are often functional. For example, they will cause Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Why? Because there might be uh, the formation of pancreatic gastrinomas leading to Zollinger Ellison syndrome and features of peptic ulcer. Similarly, the patients might present with hypoglycemia and neurological manifestations, okay, which is associated with another endocrine tumor that is insulinomas. So these pancreatic endocrine tumors, as I told you, in some cases can be functional and when they are functional, they might present in these ways. They might present as Zollinger Ellison syndro syndrome because of a pancreatic gastrinoma astronoma or they might present with hypoglycemia and neurological manifestations associated with insulinomas. If you remember the gastrinomas is going to release the gastrin hormone which is going to cause excessive acid secretion leading to peptic ulcers. That is what is your Zollinger Ellison syndrome. The third important organ that is involved in men 1 syndrome is the pituitary and the most common tumor which is encountered is your prolactinoma it is a pituitary adenoma leading to prolactinoma and the features associated with excessive prolactin hormone okay now initially it was uh, believed that these are the three important tumors involved in men 1 that is the parathyroid pancreas and the pituitary are the only organs which are involved in men 1 but now it has been studied and it has been updated in the latest edition of robbins also that the tumors in men 1 might extend uh, extend beyond the three piece for example these patients might develop gastronomas okay elsewhere and the most common site of gastronoma is the duodenum remember this Gastronoma is not the same as the gastronoma that occurs as a part of your pancreatic gastronoma. This gastronoma, the frequency is much more common as compared to the pancreatic gastronoma that we have read before. And this gastronoma, it occurs most commonly in the duodenum. Other tumors like the carcinoid, thyroid adenomas, adrenocortical adenomas and lipomas can also occur. Now, patients of uh, men 1 syndrome, clinically, they present with recurrent hypoglycemias because of the insulinoma or peptic ulcers because of the uh, pancreatic uh, 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 or duodenal uh, gastrinomas leading to Zollinger Ellison syndrome. They might have kidney stones or nephrolithiasis because of parathormone induced hypercalcemia because of the parathyroid adenomas and hyperplasias and there might be signs in terms of prolactin excess. So with this, we complete the men one syndrome. Now we are going to understand about the second important syndrome that is the multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A. So men two can be divided into three main categories, type 2A, 2B and 4. First, we will discuss the men 2A. It is also called as the SIPL syndrome and it occurs because of germline gain of function mutation in the red proto-oncogene. So it is very important to understand that the nature of mutation over here is a gain of function mutation in the red proto-oncogene in the chromosome number 10. Now men 2A, if you see, it classically involved three important uh, uh, you know, uh, three important types of tumors are seen in men 2A. One is your pheochromocytoma involving the adrenal medulla. Then you have the medullary carcinoma thyroid arising from the C cells of the thyroid. And lastly, we have the parathyroid hyperplasia. So pheochromocytoma, if you see, it is seen in only around 40 to 50 percent of patients of men 2A. Okay, and it is often bilateral and often arises as extra adrenal site. So pheochromocytoma at extra adrenal site, they are also called as paraganglioma. Now, the second most important tumor that develops in your men, uh, uh, men 2A syndrome, if you see, 
in the medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. Now, this medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, it occurs in 100% of all the patients with MEN 2A and these are multifocal. Okay, for example, there will be multiple sites of the thyroid will be involved by the same medullary carcinoma thyroid and it is also associated by areas of C-cell hyperplasia. As I have told you in the beginning that hyperplasias always, uh, they precede the carcinoma. So, along with the carcinomas, you will have areas showing hyperplasia of the C-cell cells from which the medullary carcinoma thyroid arises. It is associated with the release of calcitonin hormone and clinically it is a very aggressive tumor. It is an aggressive tumor. Now the third important component of your MEN 2A syndrome is your parathyroid hyperplasia which is seen in 10 to 20 percent patients of MEN 2A only and these patients they present with hypercalcemia because the parathyroid hyperplasia leads to an increased release of parathormone okay so as a result increased excessive calcium will be absorbed and excessive calcium is present in the blood that might also lead to nephrolithiasis or kidney stone formation so this is all about your men 2a syndrome wherein we can see pheochromocytoma medullary carcinoma thyroid and parathyroid hyperplasia then we will come to the second leg of your men 2 syndrome that is the men 2b Okay, men 2B syndrome. So, very important thing is over here also there is a mutation in the RET gene. But very importantly, this germline mutation, okay, it is not causing the gain of function mutation. Rather, it is causing a missense mutation in the RET. Whereas in case of men 2A, if you remember, there is a gain of function mutation in the RET proto-oncogene. So, the molecular nature of involvement of the RET is different in type 2A and type 2B men syndrome. Okay, so due to the, it occurs because of the germline missense mutation of the RET gene, which is distinct from the mutations of MEN2 as I told. And this is responsible for all the cases of MEN2B. So all the cases of MEN2B will have missense mutation in the RET protoncogene. Now MEN2B is characterized by as we had seen previously, very importantly, medullary thyroid carcinoma. Now, the most important feature of the medullary thyroid carcinoma caused by men to be syndrome is that it is usually multifocal and they are more aggressive compared to the medullary thyroid carcinoma in men 2A syndrome. Very, very important MCQ. Okay. Now, these individuals are also involved by pheochromocytoma that is seen in men 2A syndrome. But the third important condition that is the primary hyperparathyroidism which was present or the parathyroid hyperplasia which was present in men 2A, it is not seen in men 2B. So, this hyper primary hyperparathyroidism is not a feature of men 2B. Rather, there are more specific features like they have neuromas and ganglioneuromas involving the skin, oral mucosa eyes and GIT. In fact, this is the most common differentiating feature between the men 2A and 2B. And also these patients are having morphinoid habitus with a long axial skeleton and hyperextensible joints. Now, there is one important entity. There was a separate entity before that is called as the familial medullary thyroid carcinoma. So, first we have to understand what familial medullary thyroid carcinoma was. Okay, previously this was listed as a separate entity apart from MEN2 syndrome. And what was familial medullary thyroid carcinoma? Families which were having isolated medullary thyroid carcinoma only, okay, with germline mutations in the RET gene without any other features of men to be. So, they were not having any other features of men to be, like they were not having your uh, uh, pheochromocytoma, they were not having the morphinoid habitus, they were not having the neuromas, all these other features were not there. Only isolated medullary thyroid carcinoma with germline RET mutation was present. So, these cases were called as familial medullary thyroid carcinoma and they were regarded as a separate entity before. But in the latest edition of Robbins, it has been shown that the familial medullary thyroid carcinoma, it comes under the heading of men to be only and it is a very important potential exam question. Okay. Now, unlike uh, in case of MEN1 syndrome, okay, over here in case of the MEN2 syndrome, there is a role of genetic counseling in MEN2 syndrome. Okay, there is a role of genetic counseling and screening in MEN2 syndrome. Why? Because the medullary thyroid carcinoma is life threatening and can be prevented by early thyroidectomy. So, very, very important is the role of genetic counseling is there in MEN2 syndrome because if uh, a person of MEN2 syndrome is recognized, then for their family members can be tested as well okay so very very important 
now there is another syndrome which is under, under the men 2a uh, men 2 category is your men 4 syndrome it comes under the men 2 syndrome only now this occurs because of germline mutation in the cdk and 1b gene which is also a tumor suppressor gene leading to a reduced amount of p27 levels okay now the phenotype is very similar to the men 1 syndrome okay they have the three p's the only few point of difference is that over here the hyperparathyroidism it occurs quite late it is not the initial manifestation the clinical feature basically these patients presents with features suggestive of men 1 syndrome but there is no men 1 mutation and these patients additionally they have tumors of the reproductive system like that is the testicular tumors neuroendocrine tumors renal as well as adrenal tumors okay so this is all about the men syndrome there is also one other men syndrome called as men x syndrome but it is not seen in humans it is only demonstrated in rats so with this i hope you have understood in details about the men syndrome and if you have understood kindly please uh, subscribe to our channel please like share and comment because by doing so you are going to help grow our channel thank you once again